Call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So before we begin, uh, in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. So do the members mind if we take... I was just going to say, maybe Columbia Construction also. <laughs> yeah, instead of, the other ones might take a little bit longer than... Do the members mind if we begin with uh, Andrew's Pizza, which is uh, item, where are we? Here? Number eight. Right, number eight? Yep. No. Would, would the members like to start with that? A yep. little off agenda, is that all right? Okay, eight. so can mm -hmm. we call Andrew's forward? Please come to the podium. Madam Chair, through you. The uh, application before you is for an automatic amusement device, and uh, specifically it's for a so-called claw uh, machine uh, in which uh, the user uh, deposits money and uses a device to select a stuffed animal or other prize of some sort. Um, you see that there's some documentation that's in there from the various departments relative to the uh, license. Um, no significant issues or concerns raised relative to the location uh, that's being requested. Again, this is for their new location, which is further north <coughs> up on Main Street. I don't know your exact address on Main Street, but... Uh, 197A. For their new spot. Do the members have any questions? No. Do I hear a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the following automatic amusement device license to expire December 31st, 2018, subject to all regulatory department require requirements, Andrea's House of Pizza. Second. Motion on a second by Selectman Schultz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. It's unanimous. Parents and grandparents, bring your quarters. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, do the members mind if we take up on the, um, the next item? What's the number? Steve? Number seven. Where, oh, that's where I can't find One it. day wine and malt One beverage license. One day wine and malt beverage license, Columbia Construction. Yep. Is there anyone here? Could you step to the podium, please? Madam Chair, through you, the board members have in their uh, packet this evening a series of comments back from the various departments that reviewed this application for a one-day license for an event to be held um, at the uh, River Park facility. Um, I believe there's a representative who's here this evening that can speak more specifically to the event, so I'll defer to her. Thank you. Well, in recognizing you, would you please state your name for the record? Amelia Howard with Columbia Construction. Um, we'll be hosting a, it's a charity event fundraiser for one of our employees who is just diagnosed with brain cancer, um, the same one that John McCain just had. Um, so the fundraiser, all the proceeds are going to go into a trust for his family which I provided the tax ID number on the um, description letter as well. Members have any questions? No, everything's How many different food vendors are you gonna have? There's two food vendors, Roxy's Grilled Cheese and Red Bones Barbecue. Um, both have been in touch with the Board of Health. They'll be arriving early on th that day and the Board of Health will inspect them at noon. Are they so get the catering? I know they get a one-day license or a catering license. Um, I'm not sure on that one. That's being handled by another employee okay. in Columbia. Just a heads up, they, I, we've run some of these events. They will. Okay. Just make sure they have their license for that day. That's okay. To serve food offsite. Okay. Yep. And Madam Chair, I move to approve the following one-day wine and malt beverage license for use on September 23rd, 2018, between the hours of 1 p.m. and 5. Uh, 5 p.m., subject to all regulatory department requirements, Columbia Construction Company, 100 River Park Drive. Second. Motion and a second by Select Member Schultz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. Thank you. Good Terrific. luck. Good luck with that. So, moving along, we are at public comment. Do we have anyone here for public comment? 
No one. All right, so our next order of business will be selectmen's reports. Uh, Madam Chair, just in relation to our um, ongoing water projects, uh, and we need to acquire a site for the uh, treatment plants for chlorination treatment plant uh, on Route 28. Uh, Mr. Masseri, myself, and Mara Clark will be meeting with the uh, principal owners of a location on Main Street tomorrow afternoon uh, to continue discussions which started uh, about a week ago. And uh, we'll have an update for the board at our next meeting on that. I would just uh, like to uh, thank the uh, individual well, individuals who made an anonymous uh, donation of a panel truck to the food pantry. The individual or individuals who did have asked not to, <coughs> for the name, not for public attention. So, but the truck is on site, and I believe it's been used. So. At uh, up to now, individuals that uh, volunteer for the food pantry have taken their own vehicles into Boston to pick up food weekly, and now with the panel truck, they'll be able to do it without on, uh, using the truck instead of their own vehicles. Second thing uh, is related to getting a better explanation out regarding the uh, reason the uh, uh, trash bill has been increased. I think there are a number of people in the public based on the chatter on the web that don't fully understand why. And I'll just say that the main cause, and it's affected not only North Reading, but most of the towns in the area, are the fact that uh, China has stopped accepting recyclables, <coughs> requiring uh, the benefit that we were getting from that has gone away, which has forced the cost of trash removal to go higher. That's all I have. And I think to that point, it had been a number of years since the fee was implemented that it had not been raised. I think it was with 10 years or Correct. maybe longer. 10 years, yes. So Correct. We needed to do that to absorb the extra cost it was going to be because of all the, those recycling-related issues. If it's any consolation, we are not alone. I mean, the, the cost of uh, trash removal and recycling for all communities across Commonwealth and across the country have escalated substantially. Uh, we certainly have benefited from some uh, long-term contracts that we've negotiated over the last few years, which are now expired and had to be renegotiated. So I think this is just an adjustment to, uh, to cover the costs associated with it. Mr. Schultz, uh, Mr. Mosseri, do you have something I, I will state that... Uh, it's been the effort of all the citizens of the town to, to continue to recycle. And we're not suggesting that they don't continue that because that has kept us from, prevented us from raising the uh, recycling uh, or the trash rate all these years. So. We have a great advocate in Ed McGrath as well. And I think he, he provided something that's uh, an informational to help, <coughs> to help people understand. <coughs> I was throwing bags into my recycling for the longest time until I saw his information. So he's been great about getting the word out. All of his services, a volunteer, everything that he's been doing is volunteer for us. So I think that was posted, right, Mr. Gilberto? I'm sorry, I'm uh, stepped away from the desk for a moment. Mr. McGrath had a, an informational on what could be recycled and what should not be recycled. I'll I go back. I, I, on one of the I seem to recall it being posted in the early spring, but we'll go back and make sure if it if it was posted and it's dropped down to the bottom of the list, we get it back up on the top. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, a couple of recreational items. Um, first of all, in late August, I met with a group of folks and some folks at town hall about exploring the possibility of a bike trail, uh, rail on our old rail bed going through North Reading and. Uh, there's some state funding available that has matching federal grants that if we can pull this off, and I don't know if we can or cannot, but we are exploring it. Um, along the same lines, I met earlier today for a couple of hours some folks that want to have a dog park in town as well. That's another thing we're going to explore and see if it's feasible. I just want to let the uh, folks out there know that we are looking at these issues. And they're both in their infancy, but we are looking at them. 
Anything else? Nope. I'm going to say something usually Mr. Mosseri says school's back in. So just a reminder to people, be cautious as you're driving. Those, those lights on Central aren't, the, the goal isn't to make them light up. The goal is to keep them unlit, slow down, and, and the buses are coming to and from, and just respect the rules of the road. Let the kids get, get on and off the buses, and you know, be careful. Just, just, just one, one other thing in relation to uh, Mr. Schultz's comments in relation to the uh, rail trail, bike trail, um, what was the other way? Dog park. Uh, dog park. Uh, I've also had some inquiries and suggestions that we look at to, and maybe this is going to the land utilization committee or somebody, um, community garden. You know, so that That's we could incorporate idea. that mm -hmm. in an overall plan and discussion with whoever you're, you're talking with. Uh, I think that would. Uh, would bode well because I know there are some people who have contacted me and uh, said, you know, this would be a good idea and it's a great thing to have. A lot of communities have it and we certainly have some space. Yeah. So uh, all we need is a little water. And we're going to have plenty of water. <laughs> so We have it in Malden. We have <coughs> one in Malden and I can volunteer the contracts that we drew up for our participants. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So if we can find a spot and find some water for people and uh, I think it's just a, another good thing for the community to offer if we have the space and the inclination yeah. to do so. So if you could include that in your discussions, that would be great. Dogs and veggies. Dogs and veggies. That's it. Mr. Mosseri? You know, seeing the police chief is here, I'm just curious as to how the rerouting of the uh, traffic around the Bachelor School worked out today. It's actually been very good. We've kept all the traffic off of Havel Street. Um, I think Friday, tomorrow will be the test because it'll be a full day of kindergarten. So. Um, but we have officers that are there dedicated to making sure everything's flowing well, um, as well as the other schools. So it's working out very well. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, moving along. Our next item on the agenda is a discussion of national grid, a, vote, a possible vote on guidance or, or instructions. Madam uh, Chair. Um, as you are well aware and recall of the well, last two selectmen's meetings, we had a representative, uh, one of our constituents, uh, Mr. David Monahan, come before the board and ask the board to consider a moratorium or some other action in relation to the um, employee lockout at National Grid and the impact that it's having on um, services provided to the customers and the community as a whole in relation to uh, natural gas. In addition to that, also, uh, we touched on uh, the impact on the employees who have been locked out, you know, who are no longer collecting any wages, and their benefits have been um, suspended in relation to health insurance. Uh, at the time of the last meeting, uh, as we had some brief discussion, uh, I said that I would offer some form of a uh, resolution or guidance or something for the board to consider in relation to um, the national grid situation. Um, I have put something together and circulated it to the members of the board, uh, but before I, I read it and propose it formally, <clears throat> I think I'd just like to uh, touch on a few of the subjects that we touched on before, and we have you know, Mr. Monahan again is, is still here, is here again uh, with, uh, I think, a colleague, uh, part of the negotiating team, uh, who would like to also address the board. But uh, if you recall, in the public, uh, if they recall, the, the board uh, asked the administration to reach out to National Grid Management to come and present their case after Mr. Monahan first came before the board. And uh, they declined the invitation, basically stating that they, um, they don't want to discuss the labor dispute in, in public, public meetings. So an opportunity has been given to National Grid. They've declined uh, to come before uh, the board and discuss it. Uh, while well, they did meet with some members of the administration and did uh, exchange some correspondence, which has all been shared with the board, uh, so that we know their positions and the rationale behind it, uh, so, so we're, we've been made well aware as to what National Grid's position is. Um, you know, it's important to note that you know the National Grid again is the sole supplier of gas to our community. They have basically a monopoly in delivering services, and the concern uh, that I have as a member of the board and sure some members of the board here also share, uh, is that their decision, 
in. And I don't question their right of their decision from a strategic standpoint to do what they've done. I, I may not like what they did and I may not condone it, but you know, they made a conscious uh, decision in the course of labor negotiations to make a decision. But that decision um, impacts this community. It impacts this community from uh, uh, questioning as to what type of work is being done here and by whom. Uh, again, they've uh, replaced 1,250 employees with uh, 700 of their own uh, management staff and office staff to do the work out on the road and contracted approximately 600 other people. So they've got uh, 1,300 people uh, doing the work of the 1,250. Now the question comes, and are they getting the work done and are they meeting the needs of our community uh, from a public health, public safety, and economic development standpoint? Uh, they have made no bones about it. They have stated publicly uh, through correspondence and in articles in magazines and newspapers that they are pretty much limiting their work to emergency calls only and um, mandated uh, responsibilities as far as compliance, you know, for public for safety issues only. And they have not, they do not have the ability and have not been able to uh, meet the needs of non-emergency situations, which includes, again, new tie-ins for new homes, new tie-ins for subdivisions, uh, new tie-ins for uh, new developments, and whether it be a CVS, whether it's going to be Pulte Homes, um, all of these things have been put on the back burner because of their inability to uh, meet the demands and the needs uh, of the community. That impacts us. And I think it's important that this board take a position somehow to uh, express our consternation, our concerns with who's actually doing the work and how's it being monitored, and the impact that it's having on our community from an economic development <coughs> and public service uh, um, methodology. So it's, um, so again, I've prepared something and circulated it uh, to the members of the board uh, for your consideration, and, and I'll, I'll read it later on and then we can discuss it. In the meantime, I, with the uh, permission of the chair, maybe call on Mr. Monaghan again to uh, again reiterate the position. He is a, a constituent, an employee of a National Grid, a member of the union. Um, their position, the impact has had, what they believe the impact is on our community, as well as their own families, and then I believe he has a representative from the uh, negotiating team also. Ms. Monaghan, can you step up to the podium and just maybe address some of these concerns? <coughs> we have, um, you know, we have heard from you the past two meetings, yeah. but I think um, it'd be helpful if you, if the board, any of the board members have any questions. Certainly. Um, to what extent you can answer them, that would be a big help. And if I you could just name you could and just, address again that for the would record. be great <laughs> yes and if you could just briefly give us you know a, a brief synopsis because we have heard from you in the previous two meetings so. yep um, my name is David Monahan I live at 42 Wilson Ave here in North Reading um, I've appeared at the last two select meetings to request some form of a moratorium <coughs> or restrictions on the gas company and pipeline projects here in town while we were out um, here with me today is Jimmy Mariolis he has more experience in the specifics of, I work on the service side where I go into customers' homes. Jimmy works on the side where he's involved directly in the projects and has past experience in that. As far as what would transpire in one of these projects that we're asking for the moratorium, he might be able to answer some of the questions a little bit better, but I would be happy to. Basically, we've been is, out is of Jimmy work. From, I don't mean to interrupt you, but is Jimmy from North Reading as well? Jimmy is not. Okay, where are you from, Jimmy? I am from Westwood, Mass. I represent employees out of the Lowell shop that serves me. I'm not ready. I've worked for the company 31 years. Okay. I'm the vice president of the union. Mr. Moynihan, how long have you been out of work? How I have been out of work since the morning of June 25th. Okay. Jimmy, right Jimmy, what's your full name? James Just for the Mar record. Yeah. Yes, James Mariolis. Okay. Um, uh, I just preliminarily have two or three questions for you um, because I didn't get to ask them the last time but did the union vote to walk off no we voted to not accept the contract and we offered to continue working under the terms of the old contract which we've done at the bequest of the company at both of the last 
contract expirations. And so we continued under both of those circumstances. So in other words, you didn't vote to strike. Correct. Okay. And um, I, I think we've all read or heard or there's a lot of discussion about a lockout. And I think we can all assume what that is. But what exactly, could, if you could briefly explain, what's the lo what is a lockout? A lot. Yep. A lockout is when the company takes action to not allow us to come to work. Quite simply, we had offered to, and again, you, you're talking about contract bargaining now, and I'm certainly the safety act was uh, number one. But because of the company's actions, that's why they have put people at potential risk. I mean, safest part of the cities and towns is when we're all doing our jobs. But a lockout to answer you, we offered to extend the contract as we have the prior two contracts. Very difficult bargaining with this company, but nonetheless, we reached agreements. This for this case, they seem to have taken this hard, hard line to we feel put put public risk and their own workers. But that's what a lockout. We go back tomorrow if they let us work under the existing conditions. And we have continued to try to bargain with them right now. So, excuse me, so the lockout, no wages are being paid, and no benefits, including health insurance benefits. Correct. Uh, with any. We received a letter at, at our home stated the day that we were told we couldn't come to work when we all showed up, saying that our health care was canceled effective July 1st, which was the start of the month afterwards. Mr. Malsieri. How many times has the union met with the gas company uh, since the uh, lockout? Since the lockout, we've had five bargaining sessions. And has any progress been made? The company hasn't moved in any of their positions. So we are still trying to bargain all outstanding proposals that we have because quite frankly, they just ran the clock out, put an offer on us, and again, we, we did vote on it, but it did not, it did not pass. But <coughs> we feel that the bargaining process wasn't complete. And again, it's very, very unfortunate that, you know, again, I'm, I'm a little surprised that you're asking about con con which is fine, because this is just unnecessary, what the company has done. And, Furthermore, as this is going on and on, it doesn't seem to have any end in sight any time yet. The cost of all this, the millions of dollars on, on additional police details, hotels for these contract workers, the cost is just going up and up. Hotels to put them in, 10 to 15 people on a job for an emergency um, that would take us two or three experienced people it's unfathomable. So we are on our end working that. But again, who's going to pay for this? I would hope it's not the city and town's residents on their rate case. And what's going on, there's just so much to this. So certainly, we employ you to take some kind of action for the safety, first and foremost, of the residents, and to mitigate any you know, anything that you can from stricter oversight. Uh, certainly on our end, we are engaging the DPU. We are going out um, trying to deal with any other officials, public officials we can. And um, we're trying to get back to work. So I'm sorry to go on. Thank you for allowing me to speak. If there any more questions? Mr. Schultz. Just a couple questions, guys. And first of all, I hope you guys resolve this and can get back to work first and foremost. Nobody Thank wants you. to see a family Thank you. but a paycheck. Um, National, I think I read somewhere on National Grids and Materials, they're claiming the contractors are using are the same contractors they've used in the past? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The on that, let me just explain that. Yeah. We protect life in public, almost like your buyer. Yeah. These contractors, they install new mains, new, new work. And we generally have inspectional people that we do, which is another very critical part of what we do. There's a couple of different levels of inspection. Uh, in this particular case, those contractors, they might have a crew leader, and they have some laborers, and they put in pipe, and they do some tie-in work, and it's a controlled situation. We have oversight. But, but what they're trying to tell you is we have to have uh, certain qualifications as pinpointing leaks, responding to a broken line, uh, odor investigations, all kinds of qualified operator tasks. 
on our crews, on our personnel, everybody has these task qualifications. I've been here 31 years, and I can tell you a great example. The Lowell Folk Fest was, was horribly, there was a, a leak all weekend long, and I could tell by just seeing what was going on, they weren't trying to pinpoint a leak. They took measurements, and they dug hole to a particular fitting. As I know the job, I've done it. And they dug a second hole, and they were just, I almost was saying, what are they doing? They're just trying to just dig and say, it's called sealing a bell joint. It was a, a spigot joint. They dug a third hole only because during that weekend, and I'm really narrowing down a whole weekend. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we need to know about the law. Okay. Here. My oh, question no. is, is it the it's same? To your point of yeah. experience, though, that's what, I wanted that's to get what to. I'm getting at. Okay. So, so these people here, they have one, one, there was a retired supervisor just last week in Draken. He had eight contractors hanging over him while trying to watch, train him how to pinpoint a leak. And that's only if he's around. And there's another case that happened <coughs> in South Street and Tewksbury at Main Street about a month ago. Gas was blowing for three hours because there was a particular type of tea called the tomahawk tea. And just to understand, you have to have a certain way of pin, putting a pinpoint tool in it. Well, they had to wait for one of the experienced supervisors to come over and do that because the other people they have do not normally typically do that work. They're not completing the work they normally do. Yes, they normally work for the company. They're doing they do different one things. One specific task. They're being asked to do many different tasks that aren't in their normal duties. Okay. The other question I have for you guys, I saw, I mean, again, National Grid's letters are our PR from National Grid, and I get that. They're laying out the issues that they're saying, look, the union's being unreasonable. Of course, they're going to say that. What are the, like, what are the top issues that are holding you guys back on? Is, I mean, I, I can see there's four or five issues. I'm sure there's sure. one or two that are the real sticking points. What are the biggest <coughs> ones? That okay, real, real, real quick, but very, very important is health care. Uh, this company made billions. I, again, how much money they make, say, is that relevant or not relevant? Well, they make more money, $3.5 billion, uh, $6 billion in operating. We just want to maintain our health care. We want to bargain fairly. We want to be treated fairly. We, had, we tried to counter-propose the medical, but company didn't seem to want to. Because what they're saying, and again, I'm just, sure, this is sure, what they're sure. saying. No, fair enough. They're offering, fair according enough. to them, they're offering a plan that I know as a private employer yes. is better than what I have personally. Sure. Um, is the union looking for a no deductible plan? We, we've had that. We're trying to maintain that. Yeah. And, and again, it's amazing. I'm, I'm kind of blown away here, but I'm, I'm glad to talk bargaining with you to some degree, certainly not to forget the safety piece of it. But on that, you know, we, we, we we could, I could tell you, and you, this is what I mean. Yeah. We have a bargaining history, sir. And we have given up things in the past to maintain certain things. The fact that we just had a two-year contract, when other people got five-year contracts, they made heavy concessions on the future. Mm -hmm. The other big sticking point is certainly, you come to work with me, you do the same job next to me. You do not have a pension. You do not have the same medical retiree health care yep. that I do. You create a a serious lesser class of work eating or young exactly yeah. but that's the way Why? that's the way all negotiations are these days though is the I union don't know about that I tend to differ I think every, at least with the co our collective bargaining yeah. we should make our own deal well yeah. with the health insurance though it's it's it the price of health insurance has gone up exponentially more than the price of everything else in this world sure. so the idea of no I just I want to see you guys back to work but I if you're trying to get a no deductible plan I think that's something that was available 10 years ago that doesn't exist anymore in the, it, most companies. Uh, I'd like to actually yeah. re redirect this yeah, really sure. to what we're here yeah. on. I, I, I short comment on that. The way I've alluded to other people when I've had this conversation in my personal life is most people when they go for their yearly review at work don't hope to get less than what they already have. If we were to accept the terms of what they had offered us, we would receive less. That's fair. And I hope you guys worked this out. I really yeah. do. We weren't yeah. asking for anything new. We were only asking to keep what we had. So nothing that we're asking for that is a sticking point is something that we don't already receive. But you guys realize what you already receive costs a lot more now. That's the problem. It's the health insurance. As I said yeah. to you, we were bargaining. We had a counterproposal. Yeah. If I could just redirect yeah. this, I think really <coughs> what, what our concerns are certainly is the, is the overall impact that this lockout is having on our community. Yep. And I can appreciate the information and the things that you're referencing from the other communities. I just, I just, we have our public safety officials here. We have heard from them in the previous meeting indicate to us that 
that there, there aren't any public safety. I, I really want us to be clear because of the members of the public that are watching and listening to make sure we're not unnecessarily scaring people um, into thinking that they're unsafe uh, in their homes or they're unsafe on the streets of North Reading. Um, but I, I'd like to, us to just talk to our public safety officials to really address, to speak to what they, what if anything they are aware of in terms of permitting or permitting process or work that's being performed here by the contractors that you know already were working for National Grid that might raise a concern if, if, if you don't mind. We have our director of public safety here. You've heard from him at the previous yep. meeting, Chief Murphy. We have the fire chief here, thank you, and we have our new director, DPW director here, and appreciate all of you attending here. If we could just hear from you, that would be great. Sure. Um, Madam Chair, so I, since the last meeting, I have known of no installations or any work being done by National Grid. Um, I, I think clearly the work in, in and of itself is dangerous, and it's a public safety concern for us, but um, I believe there is significant oversight both through the company and with the state. Um, but I don't think there's, a, there's any more concern today than there has been from at least my perspective. Um, certainly could, the fire chief can speak um, to his department, but I just don't see it. I, I know that I heard some talk that they were gonna tell us of what the safety issues are. I've, I've <coughs> talked with National Grid, I've talked to their subcontractors. Um, I don't know if there were any complaints prior to the lockout about the subcontractors, but um, my understanding is it's the same subcontractors. So uh, our position is that, at least from the public safety and on the police side of it, is there's no more concern today than there was before June. Than there ever has been, just right. because of the nature of the work. Yes. Uh, Chief, did you want to add anything? Sure, I, I'd like to reiterate some of what Chief Murphy has already said. We've, we've not received any uh, concerns or complaints regarding uh, those safety concerns uh, with National Grid. Um, two concerns that I do have, some that Mr. O'Leary has addressed, is, is will this impact the Pulte Homes project and will this impact uh, the CBS project buildings going in there? Uh, so that, that remains to be seen. You probably have a bit more in terms of that <coughs> because those are all scheduled and on schedules for certain completion dates. So we haven't had an abundance of uh, permit applications since I started here, but we do have six active right now. And uh, you know, some of those are new service, new gas service, retire old service, um, what I would consider as relatively minor work, although I don't think uh, any gas work can, can be considered minor from a safety standpoint. But I haven't, I haven't seen, and, and I spoke at length today with the town engineer about what he's seen in relation to, to any gas work, and it's, it's again, what the, both chiefs have, uh, have stated, I'll reiterate <coughs> that we haven't noticed any changes uh, in the way we do business and the, the way we interact with the gas company. Members have any questions? Mr. O'Leary? Uh, no question, more comment. Uh, again, I placed a, uh, a call to the uh, State Department of Public Utilities just to get their perspective on it and at about 3.30, quarter four this afternoon, I got a call from the uh, chief of staff and two senior uh, uh, management uh, level people from the uh, safety and engineering division which oversees uh, the gas companies. And you know, I spent about 20 minutes, half an hour on the phone with them, asking them a series of questions as to what role do they really play, you know, what is their role, what role do they play, um, what oversight do they have and uh, what types of checks do they have in place in order to ensure that the uh, National Grid and other companies are in compliance. Um, they stated that, first of all, that they, uh, their business plan is status quo. You know, whether it's two permits issued or 2,000 permits issued, you know, they have a job to do and they do it. Their responsibility is to ensure that there's uh, compliance with federal regulations. So the state is oversight to ensure compliance with federal regulations. Uh, they have uh, the authority to uh, do job site visitations, inspections, um, now both announced, scheduled, and unannounced, which they do and they continue to do. Uh, they have the authority and um, access to information on an individual worker-by-worker -worker basis 
to ensure uh, compliance with uh, certifications for specific tasks that are assigned and access to information which would provide them um, knowledge as to whether or not the individual worker um, has certifications up to date and has taken the most recent tests and is uh, eligible to, to work. And they occasionally check that also. Um, they have also indicated that there's been an uptick in complaints um, on National Grid you know, uh, as a result of the lockouts. Um, they said that each and every uh, complaint that they receive uh, is taken very seriously, uh, investigated, uh, and adjudicated, and uh, determinations are made. Uh, they have a significant number of them ongoing now. Uh, they did not indicate, uh, I did ask them, I said, you know, have you had any uh, uptick in violations or noncompliance? And they said they're not in a position to say whether or not they were or they were not, other than we can be assured that they're doing their job and they're investigating each and every complaint. Um, so it didn't surprise me to say, yes, you know, we have some, they did or they did not. So who's the complaining party, National Grid or? No, no, complaints about National oh, Grid. about them, oh, yeah, okay. Regarding yeah. National Grid. So yeah. complaints for work product uh, qualifications of individuals whatever the whatever the complaint is oh, that, you know whether it, you know wrong. whether if you had a gas leak at your home and you know wasn't responded to it on a uh, timely basis and you called the DPU that's an investigation okay. you know so it, it's complaints about the company by consumers or the community or whomever so it's uh, uh, so again they have regular on-site um, investigators and uh, supervision they have uh, Again, scheduled, they'll tell National Grid that we're going to be down at the corner of the Main and North Street, 10 o'clock Monday morning to oversee the site, or they may just show up unannounced. So um, they said there is an uptick. Um, I asked them if there were other communities that had been in communication with them and expressed any concerns. They said they had not. They were notified by other communities, uh, numerous other communities that have instituted moratoriums or restrictions on permits to National Grid, but no one had actually reached out to them and asked them for assistance uh, or guidance. Uh, so I guess we're the first ones. Well, I was the first one. Uh, but they have been notified by those communities uh, that moratoriums are in place. And again, there, there was a recent article in the uh, supplement to the transcript where numerous communities in the area here have uh, issued moratoriums, Bo local boards, of uh, selectmen, uh, Alderman, city councils uh, have implemented uh, moratoriums or more restrictions on the permitting of National Grid as a result of the lockouts. So it was a, an interesting conversation. Um, I asked them if they could lend some assistance to our community if we were looking for some additional oversight. They weren't overly joyed with offering. Um, they uh, did not commit but did not uh, say that they would not if we asked for you know verification of certifications of some workers uh, um, credentials they said they were capable of checking those uh, didn't say that they would but they said they were capable of checking those and they do that uh, on a regular basis anyway so um, I find that somewhat heartening at least that you know if we had some concerns about who's working on a specific job site or we had some complaints or heard some complaints or uh, just observations that you know, people seem to be chasing their tail. As some of the examples that uh, um, these two gentlemen were pointing out, um, you know, then we should have some legitimate concerns in relation to uh, potential public safety issues. There is no doubt, and again, the uh, DPU made it quite clear that uh, first of all, that it's National Grid's responsibility re responsibility to ensure that qualified, certified people are working on the job sites and the people are required to have certain credentials and uh, certifications. He says, that responsibility lies with National Grid. They check it, you know, but it's National Grid's responsibility. Uh, so they're aware of the situation. They said there has been an uptick in, in complaints. Uh, they said that there has been a significant downturn in the number of uh, jobs that are going on because of National Grid's uh, inability to take on uh, non-emergency work. Uh, they said that they have been notified by National Grid that they are looking at uh, looking to address only uh, emergency situations and uh, I don't know what the category is, one, two, and three. Of yeah, leaks. Yeah, leaks, leaks. Leak categories are one, two, and three and uh, some other 
category, which I'm totally unfamiliar with. Uh, and National Grid has informed them that that's what they're concentrating their efforts on, as well as uh, mandated compliance issues in relation to, uh, you know, maintaining, maintaining some lines. So, uh, and they don't, they've been informed that they don't expect an awful lot of non-emergency work to be completed. And again, that comes back to our projects and uh, uh, people's ability to, to get the services they need. Uh, so that was the conversation I had, and I, and I appreciated them getting back to me. Uh, and again, it was uh, chief, of, chief of staff and uh, two senior officials uh, in the uh, safety and uh, engineering division of the, of the DPU. So I they, should they add that I did call the general counsel, and he did call back, but I missed the call. Yeah. So they are pretty responsive. They're over very there. responsive, and, uh, and they were willing to take whatever time was needed to uh, inform me as to what their processes are, what their oversight is, what the uh, uh, the extent of the oversight is and their responsibilities where they lie and where they don't and again he referred back to you know the cities and towns you know have certain responsibilities and i said yeah but that's only from the meter into the structure he said exactly uh, so um i also i think it that <coughs> seems to reiterate i don't mean to interrupt you, no that's fine i think it seems to reiterate what they wrote to us in their letter you can correct me if i'm wrong mr gilberto but they did say that they were more geared to a Focus towards the emergency work, right? Mm -hmm. In that oh letter. yeah, no, they, we have, we have two, two letters of correspondence from them, or emails to, to, the, to the chief, and then the publications from Commonwealth Magazine and some other article uh, publication that they they put out that saying this is what they, they they've actually done. Now again, we were asked by Mr. Monahan at the first meeting to uh, uh, consider a moratorium. You know, after I've considered it, and it's included in the statement here. Uh, a moratorium is uh, basically already in place. Mm -hmm. National Grid has already placed a moratorium on themselves and their, and their uh, inability to um, meet the, the demands that are currently being asked of them is minimal and they've admitted it. You know, so you know, while they've locked out 1,250 people, they supposedly have 600 contract employees and 700 uh, uh, supervisory employees you know, there's 1,300 to replace them to do the work. But obviously, they're unable to do that from a, a number state. They have plenty of numbers. They have the bodies, but they haven't got the bodies with the proficiency to do it in an efficient, timely, and cost-effective manner. Um, so. so, Mr. O'Leary, I think we, we have really <clears throat> discussed this as a board, and I do want to give the other members a chance yep. to talk. And we did see, which is why the we should alert the public, why there was an amendment to the agenda uh, at the last minute. It was, a, it was on as a subcategory for discussion, but Mr. O'Leary submitted a proposal. I think at the last meeting we had left it that you would submit a proposal for us to consider. Um, I did review it. Uh, I, I mean, and I, I'll, I'd like to hear from the other members as well. Um, I don't know if it's something you want to read into the record or we we have had the opportunity to take well, it. I, it would be my intention it's entirely up to the chair how you want to handle it to make a motion to accept the contents of the memorandum guidance as proposed uh, for the board to accept basically it's it's stating some of the facts here and basically giving the administration some guidance to move forward in relation to the permitting process so I have a motion. Do I have a second well, on that? I, I, I didn't make the motion yet. Oh, I, I that, that would be did. my All intention. Right. Yeah. But, uh, okay. but again, I didn't know if you wanted to uh, continue with the discussion. I do. I, I would if the other members would like an opportunity to, to, to speak to the proposed memo. Mr. Schultz? Yeah. Mr. Moynihan, you've been here, I think, three times now. Yep. And I'm sorry. I know, Jimmy, I, I didn't get your last name. But thanks again, guys, thanks for coming. I, I really hope you guys wrap this up. I, it sounds like you guys are out of loggerheads. And, I hope cooler heads can prevail and you guys can get back to work. My only concern on this is us, we're hearing what you're saying, we're seeing what they're telling us, and I want to say for the record, we've invited them, I think Mr. Gilbert, a couple of times now to come. Not only year. once, and they only respectfully once, declined. And they've declined, so they had an opportunity to be here as well, and they've chose not to be here. You guys choose to be here, and I respect that. I just have a problem with us taking a side in this, only because that's not our purview. Um, I hope you guys get back to work tomorrow, I really do. I just think it's hard for us when we, we're negotiating with, I don't, uh, how many unions do we negotiate here at a town hall? It's, it's probably town-wide seven, seven. Seven or eight, eight unions? Okay. And the school committee negotiates with unions too? Four or five units. 
I just don't think we should be taking a, a stance on a public, on a private labor dispute, unless there's a public safety issue. I think then that's a different, that's a public safety issue. I don't want you guys to think my reluctance to endorse this is anything to do with taking a side on your dispute, because it's not. I just think if we do it for you, we're doing it for everybody. And I don't know how it would look to the other employees in town hall if we're getting involved in a private labor dispute when we may have a, an issue we're negotiating, we're going to mediation with the union here. I just think it's inappropriate for us, but my opinion does not reflect in one bit on your guys' dispute. I, again, I hope you're back to work tomorrow. I just don't see how we really, as a board, should be getting involved in this. It doesn't involve us. I, if, I, if I just may, just obviously I, I do get the sense you think more of it's, it's, it's a labor dispute and that's pretty much all there is. And you feel that either the DPU or the town officials are gonna be fine if a line gets hit or there's a leak and the response time and the level of service that we're telling you based on what we've observed and the people that come out to respond to these issues, as I just said in Tuxbury, it's three, hour, three hours. Right. If we were all fully staffed with all our crews, it would not. I, I'm very confident to say that. So I, again, I, I do appreciate you, your comments and your, your, your feedback on that, but if obviously you think it's just a contract matter, then the other, you know, DPU will look into these complaints. We're, we're, what I understand, they're, 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 they are starting to look into them, and they're only complaints until they have an opportunity to investigate and be out. There used to be 10 DPU ins, uh, commissioners, now they're down to three. And for the public, if you explain what DPU is. Oh, Department of Public Just Utilities. Public Thank you very home. much. Yeah. Thank you. Department of Public <coughs> Utilities, the oversight. So obviously that's one major layer that's, that's overseeing. So I, again, thank, thank you. Yeah. But there, there, are, there is level of service, as I said, inspections. If there's work, road work, sidewalks being done, there was a good example in Lowell. There was a crew doing a new sidewalk with conduit. That happens up here in North Reading at times. There's work that's done. The main is along the shoulder. Well, we go out and pick at the job sites. We observe. We're watching. And when we see something, we say something. And we saw that there was a coating on a, on a pipe. Crew came out. Replacement crew came out. They didn't even strip the coating on the outside of the main, put primer on, and coat. They just put... And we explained that to them. And then they left, and we could see from a distance, because we can only get so close, we saw another bubble, another nick coating, which could be a potential leak in the future, had to call them back to come back. So I just say that there's a certain level of inspections, like we have designated people that come out, and they mark out the gas lines. Or if there's a, what they call a foreign opening inspector. Has anybody, I've been in other towns, and they haven't seen either Ed or Dave, you know what? And they'll come up, any jobs, water ins installations, they come up regularly. Chuck, Chuck is some, some of the town people probably know Chuck. And he comes out and he checks and he has, there's certain levels of, of service that quite frankly, I don't think is being done as well. So, I would agree with that. So yeah. again, thank you, I didn't mean yeah. to go on. Thank no, you. I agree thank with you, you. it's just, you. it's hard for us to get involved in one. I don't want you to take a side. That's I just the want problem. you to take yeah. a look at potential, and that's why I say this yeah. to you is that there is some issues other than the contract. I totally really appreciate is. why you guys are here. Thank you. Yeah. And again, just to Mr. Schultz's point, and again, you raised the point at the last meeting, you know, should we get involved in, you know, with a stop and shop? And the answer is no. This is an issue which is impacting our community from, uh, if you're not even going to say public safety, it's a, it's a community development standpoint. Yes. Our needs cannot be met, admittedly, by National Grid because of a decision that they made right. through their contract negotiations. I'm not going to question their motives or their intentions or anything else or, or the specifics of, the, of the, uh, the differences of opinion here. But their decision to lock these professionals out is impacting our community. And again, whether you want to believe it's public safety issue or not, a potential public safety issue or not, we can you know, argue that till, till midnight although the chair won't let us, um, you know. <laughs> I, it, it, but, but, the, but the issue where they can't service our needs. Yeah, that's an issue. That's, that's an, an issue. issue. Yeah. And Sully, the issue is directly. I do want to give Mr. Mosseri an opportunity Absolutely. actually yep. as well. I'm just mindful of the time and yep. I do want to keep us to, on, on task. And, but I do, I do, Mr. Mosseri, do you have any comment or anything you want to add to this deliberation? Uh, ba basically, my concern focuses obviously around the safety issue. But we have a couple of projects in town that we know they need to be 
done. And uh, the monitorium that was discussed earlier, uh, and from my point of view, is off the table because I don't want to give the gas company, a National Grid, a, uh, an excuse, right, for not getting something done. Now, <clears throat> Steve's right. They may not be able to get it done, but I'm not going to give them the excuse of blaming the Board of Selectmen in North Reading or the town of North Reading. Uh, this is almost an impossible situation. You have a union and you have a company, and uh, they can't come to an agreement. We know we've had those kinds of issues in our negotiations with our employees, and the, and the issue is more of I like to hear that, the, you know, I did hear that the employees have said, look, we'll continue to talk and we'll continue to work. And National Grid said, no, you're out of here. Right? That, that's problematic, but I don't know how to change that. I don't think we have any influence at all on that. I mean, we can make a lot of noise. Uh, we can make it even harder to get something done, but that doesn't make a lot of sense either. So uh, I, I know Mr. O'Leary, put this together and uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily against it because it's, it's not a monitorium, at least the way yeah. I read it. Uh, but I'm not sure whatever we do, I can't think of something that we can do that can change the situation. I think the guys here and their union and uh, National Grid, clearly, if they could get together and resolve the issue in one form or another, that's the solution. The other thing could be that the state, and this is when you had gone into the DPU, could start to put some pressure on National Grid to get the appropriate resources online from a safety point of view. But, you know, we can't write a letter to them at this moment and say, you know, we got a gas leak down the street. We may have one tomorrow. But, you know, we don't have any major issue to even the complaint to the DPU about that I can see. So, uh, I mean, I sit here frustrated saying, I don't know what to do. And most of the time I can come up with something <laughs> on what we should do. In this case, uh, you know, all we can do is, you know, get it in the newspaper and maybe uh, put pressure on National Grid, but we don't have a lot of leverage because we don't have something that we can hold against them at this point. So this is where we're at. Sorry. I, I do want to add to my two cents. Um, I, I agree. I, I don't think what's – I thought what you were going to propose would be something a little bit different than that, and I feel that what's proposed really puts this sort of burden and liability on us rather than where it should be, which is on national grid. Even in the scenarios that you are describing to us, if those occur, National Grid owns that, and I wouldn't want us to have extra oversight of their responsibility under the statute or under the regulations. And I also wouldn't want to burden DPU and have DPU in every little last permit involving us. I mean, it's very clear from our public safety officials here, we don't have the same scenarios going on that you're describing. And you've said you are you are public safety officials yourselves. It, you know, I think that we have people that are details, right, at these sites, performing details at, at these sites if there's an emergency. We or, yeah, we would. Yeah, and I mean, they'd be like <coughs> you standing there, you know, ensuring that What's it's being traffic? taken care of, right? It's traffic. Oh. oh, not, you're not there to. Yeah, if I may, we, we would provide traffic details, but we okay. would be overseeing the project. No, I mean in terms of if you saw something that was an emergency scenario, that's why you're there, right? We that's why you're there, right? And I, I feel like in the in the long term or in the end, if, to step in as a board, it's because it's uh, impacting our residents or our businesses, which easily you've easily made that case, and everything that we're reading easily makes that case that they're delaying services or not even being able to provide services because of this lockout, it's, a di it's directly because of it. And that in the long term, that is gonna impact us. And then ultimately, the ratepayers are the ones that are gonna be probably, in the end, uh, sub 
you know, absorbing what's going on here, right? In, in the end, that's, that's where it's going to, that's whose pocket it's probably going to come out of. I really feel, I feel you make a compelling case because no, we don't want to see, none of us wants to see anybody out of work without health insurance or locked out. But I'm, I'm in agreement with Mr. Mosseri um, in terms of this, I don't really see this as being helpful in any way and I don't want us, I wouldn't want us assuming the responsibility that it's directly upon National Grid in terms of the work that they are doing. If, uh, and again, I, after uh, some feedback from members of the board uh, and the administrator, <clears throat> I, I made some modifications from what was originally circulated to you and included in here so that the, you know, the burdens would be less and, uh, on the town and the, uh, um, the checking of, of National Grid uh, and the workers and the credentials of the workers can be addressed. I mean, obviously, the staffing of the Mass DP, uh, DPU, Department of Public Utilities, is, is limited. And the demands on them and the complaints that are being filed are going to stress those even more so their ability to go out on site and, and do what has to be done and check on people who are, haven't normally been doing these uh, types of tasks is going to be exponentially more. Uh, but in, to uh, Mr. Masseri's point, you know, as to, you know, what it is frustrating, what can we do? And, and to me, I think it's important that, you know, we join the chorus here with some of the other communities who have already taken a stand uh, to highlight the concerns that they have and we have from a public safety, public interest, and a community development standpoint, and again from a, a moral standpoint in relation to the methodology which was employed by National Grid to take away people's wages and health insurance in order to force them to, the, you know, to, to an agreement. That, that's not right. You know, so these other communities have taken a strong stand and I think we should join the chorus. And in addition to that, I think it's important in time now for communities such as us to call on the state administration to get involved in the negotiations. You know, again, there is some leverage there. And you know, I think if the governor were to get involved or the DPW commissioners were to get involved and say, you know, listen, come to the table and we want experienced workers back to the table here. And we want you to be able to service the needs of the communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I think that goes a long way. But they're not going to act unless there's a groundswell of uh, support and grassroots um, outrage in, in relation to what's really being done here. So what I've proposed here, again, is uh, allows an awful lot of discretion uh, for the administration uh, as to what they want to do. And at this point, Madam Chair, I guess I'll make the motion and read it, if that's okay. And then we can do what you want with it. All right. So, so Madam Chair, I move to uh, uh, incorporate uh, into the minutes and as um, uh, guidance uh, for the administration uh, the following statement and uh, memorandum. <clears throat> the North Reading Board of Selectmen takes the issues of public health, safety, and economic development as paramount. At the direction of the board, the administration reached out to National Grid Management. National Grid informed the administration that their company policy is not to discuss the labor dispute in public meetings and declined an invitation to speak with the board. While the board respects their position, the effects of their decision and labor negotiation strategies is impacting current development projects and raising significant public safety concerns. While the Board of Selectmen would not normally opine or inject itself into private sector contract issues, this current situation poses legitimate concern for public safety, public safety and delivery of services by National Grid to our community. National Grid's decision to lock out 1,250 of its most experienced, certified, job-specifically trained, seasoned professionals has impacted its ability to address emergency, mandated compliance and maintenance work, and non-emergency expansion needs in a timely, cost-effective manner. National Grid is the sole supplier of natural gas to our community, delivering its products and services through pipelines which lie beneath public streets, roadways, and lands, as well as privately owned residential and business properties. Primary oversight of the work performed by National Grid is provided by union inspectors employed by National Grid and periodic visitations from inspectors from the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities. Local permitting only provides oversight from gas meter to the inside of the building or structure. According to correspondence received from David Gendel, Director of Community and Customer Management at National Grid, the work continuation team, 
employed to ensure uninterrupted service to the gas customers during this lockout includes approximately 600 contract employees and roughly 700 national grid management employees, including supervisors who typically oversee their union employees. In a report provided to the board at our August 20th, 2018 meeting, a review and survey of several ongoing construction projects indicated that a moratorium of, of issuing permits for national grid may adversely impact the progress of those in future projects. The report also indicated an increased level of frustration from some developers of the current delay in services by National Grid. Developers spoke to the risk of shutting down their projects or seeking alternative energy sources because of National Grid's inability to meet time-sensitive needs and deadlines. Additional correspondence from Mr. Grendel included in the report further indicated and verified that National Grid is focused on emergency and mandated compliance work while doing a very limited amount of non-emergency work. He stated that they would do their best to prioritize the work and accommodate requests, but the reality is that they won't be able to get to anyone, to everyone. It would appear that issuing a moratorium on permits requested uh, by National Grid would have minimal effect based upon the minimum amount of non-emergency work being performed. Under current circumstances, the examples of non-emergency work described in correspondence would be cases where we, as a board, would hope to be prioritized, uh, prioritized and accommodated. A moratorium in those types of cases would do more harm than good. Public and employee safety should not be compromised. While it is recognized that all workers are mandated and required to have certifications to perform tasks, it is of concern that members of the work continuation team are less experienced and proficient than the locked out employees at the work responsibilities and tasks they are now being called upon to perform. Additionally, the current management employees would who would normally be providing oversight on employees and projects are now performing the tasks themselves with potentially less independent supervision. Union inspectors with project oversight responsibilities have been locked out, calling into question quality controls and raising potential safety concerns. The locked out employees are first responders in emergency situations and are professionally trained and experienced. Our first responders, police and fire, and the community at large rely on National Grid to provide, to provide the best skilled workforce. Until National Grid puts the locked out employees back to work, the administration, our administration, should coordinate the issuance of permits to National Grid with the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities. The town should request inspectors from DPU to provide verification of workers' credentials, credentials and necessary oversight of all permitted activity. In the absence of the DPU assistance, the administration, in its determination on a case-by-case -case basis, should provide adequate inspection oversight by appropriately trained town staff or contracted services. The costs associated with the additional oversight is to be added to the permitting fees and charged to National Grid. The administration should request that National Grid provide a list of workers and tasks assigned to each worker and their certifications for each permitted project. At the discretion of the administration, the listings will be forwarded to the DPU for verification of certifications. The administration should provide the board on a monthly basis a list of activity and permits requests, uh, permit requests of National Grid. The administration on behalf of the board through written correspondence should encourage the state administration to become more heavily involved in facilitating additional meetings between National Grid, union representatives and federal mediators in an effort to resolve the disputes. And finally, the administration on behalf of the board will follow, forward this correspondence to appropriate national grid management and reiterate and re-extend the board's invitation for national grid to address its concerns. So to just for clarification, you made a motion to read this into the record. And basically have it be a directive to the administration as to how to handle the national grid permitting process moving forward. So your motion is reading it into the record and then moving that we order all these directives to our administration. This Do I have a second? Second. And the reason is that a few minutes ago I said I don't have a good idea how to resolve this issue. And I think uh, putting a lot of pressure on the DPU and getting the state to start to realize that there's a problem that they need to get involved with will help. And I think this is a, me a way of doing it. Now, I don't know what other communities are doing, but I'm not against this approach. And I, therefore, I've seconded the motion. 
again, Madam Chair, the, the, the approach that I've taken is it allows a significant amount of discretion on the part of the administration as to which projects they need to double check. If it's just a tie into a home, a short run, short line, no. If it's a major project like Pulte, yes. We want to make sure that we have competent people there. They have competent people there who are certified to do the work because the normal people who are there to oversee it aren't on the job. They're locked out. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Schultz, do you have anything to add to discussion on the motion that's on the floor that's been seconded? No. I'll add I completely disagree with what is being proposed here. It shifts all of the burden, liability, and responsibility from National Grid to our administration now. And I am completely opposed to what is being proposed here. So let's have a vote would, on the motion. Would you, my question, Madam Chair, would be, would you have any proposal in order, how would we address it? How do we get our concerns as a local community up to a higher level and get National Grid's attention and get the governor's attention to address the issue and move it forward? I think it's highly unfair for us to now place this responsibility on our administration, who's already tasked with good deal of its own responsibilities. I do have a proposal. I thought, but, but we have a motion, we have a second. If we're gonna take a vote on it, let's take a vote on it. But I, I did prepare what I thought would be a resolve that would be appropriate. Um, because I too was in a was in a quandary, but I'm a hundred percent certain that I'm not in favor of what you are proposing. So I, I'm clear on that. So we have a motion. We have a second. Do we want to take a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. No. So the motion fails on a tie due to lack of majority. Fails. I'm happy to move uh, on or I'm no, happy I'd to like discuss. To your proposal. I, I thought what we had talked about as a board in terms of this, we, we had agreed a moratorium was ineffective. But uh, what I did propose was a re what I would like to propose um, in kind of reviewing everything that was put into the packet in the last minute is something by way of a notification to National Grid. It's just a one page. You haven't seen it, I apologize, but again, this was a last minute thing based on the two, um, what you had placed and what you had revised. Um, and the, the purpose of this resolve is because we do recognize we'd like to take some effort uh, or make a stand, but we're mindful of what our board members are saying. It's a private collective bargaining agreement, but. We're, what we're here on and what we're concerned about, we don't really have the public safety concerns that are being presented in what was just vote, what, what just didn't pass, but we should be addressing it in some manner. So by way of some sort of communication directly to National Grid is what I thought you would, were going to be proposing. And we can resolve that you put it in a letter to them uh, as the clerk of our board. Can I just interject one thing? You said you, you don't have the safety concern. The safety concern would arise if these projects move forward with the replacement workers, and, and that's, that would be my concern. I understand that there isn't a lot going on in town, but my concern, I, I live close by to where the Pulte Homes project would be, and my concern would be is if somebody that's inexperienced, um, that isn't used to doing this job, is now completing that job, what safety issues could arise from that. I mean, that's the reason I'm here. I understand that there isn't a lot that normally goes on, but it isn't a safety concern until they start, until they start operating within the town of these projects. I, I understand your point, but what, what we heard from you directly is these are the same crews that, you, that, that you've been working with if, previously. If, if that's who's working these projects now, why this lockout is going on, some of them are going to replace us. We don't know, there's a, lot of there's a lot of questions here. So again, we appreciate the board taking this time to seriously consider the safety and the support. Uh, obviously, if you said we don't think there's an issue, I, I mean obviously I, I think, believe I've heard a couple of people have some concern with, some, with the safety and then, again, something could happen tomorrow that would change that and then you'd be taking that up. 
You do moratoriums all the time every winter. You do it all the time for the safety and convenience of the public. It's a similar thing. You certainly could take some action. You could, again, with the oversight of a special project with oversight, maybe a fire detail watching when they're digging near a pipe. You could do something. And again, that's, that's just for us to bring up. We appreciate it. If you don't feel that there is an issue or it's a DPU matter, then that's the will of the board, then that is. But, but, but certainly there is some concern. We're just here for that and bringing that forward. Thank I you so much. I can appreciate that. I just, um, I'm opposed to imposing it upon our workers to do that necessary qualifications check and making sure there's licensed, trained, qualified people doing the job. That's on national grid. It is. Nothing, and, and, and maybe we, we're missing sight of that. Any of the emergencies or any of the, the laws doesn't exonerate national grid in any of this. That's right. It's what can the town do to think of anything else be while this is going on to make things as safe as they can or to mitigate any risk. And, and, and that's all we're just trying to bring to you. We have 30, 20 complaints just ourselves, and they're only complaints. We know they're violations. I know when they put an aerator in a manhole wrong, the opposite way, and it pushes air back into the manhole. Back in, that happened in Lowell a month ago. I know that's, 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 that's not quality. That's not how it's supposed to be. But until they can come out and investigate, which they're short-staffed. So thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, we appreciate you. your thank coming you. here and giving thank us you. your input. It's important to hear okay. from you. So um, does anyone have any comment? Mr. Schultz. Uh, guys, I, I want to help you out here, I do, but I don't want to take a side. But I do want to help you out because I think you, you guys have a good faith dispute. If I may ask, when's the last time you guys sat down for a bargaining uh, session? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Okay. And is there another session planned? Yes, there's two more next week. Next week? Mm -hmm. Why don't we, as the board, especially with our chairman not here tonight, why don't we've already spent an hour on this right now, and we could probably go to midnight on this issue. You're going to meet two more next week. Why don't you guys come back to our next meeting on the 17th, and we can, when our chairman's here, we can pick this issue up. I just, I'm not comfortable voting on something I just saw. Um, well, it's only it's it's only one page, and it's big print, and it's taking you know, a stand, which is what I think the yeah, collective I desire of the board to yeah, do I, is. I don't know if that is the collective desire. Okay, well that's all right. I, Let's can I just ask? Can I just ask for a clarification, sure. uh, Madam Chair, as to what your you, you state uh, here? A few bullet points. Presents concerns for our community regarding safety due to uncertainty as to the level of training and qualifications of replacement work is being utilized by National Grid at the present time. So right. We don't know. You, <clears throat> you haven't given us any evidence that they're not qualified. We know from the law they're required to be qualified. We her her have heard, sure. now we've heard multiple times, so we are going around in circles now on this issue. No, this is we've heard multiple no, my, times. No, my question is... Uh, well, we uh, don't know. No, but I'm hearing you, but you, you want that as part of the resolution. That, you, that you're proposing. Yes. Right, right. So I'm hearing, I'm right. reading well, one I thing and hearing a different thing, I guess. I'm confused. It's, I want to support anything. Right. To move, right. To, to get on the record of raising some concern here. So, but, but I don't think we know. No, but I don't well, think in we your know that, that, that the workers that are being utilized, because they've been being utilized, are causing any any greater safety issue but that's not what you're saying here I guess that's why I'm, I'm questioning it only because I'd be happy to strike it sit. no I'm not strike looking to it strike it at want. all I'm with it but well, it didn't sound like you were with it but you're proposing yeah it. I don't hear anything that tells me this is that the crews that they're using which they've used previously are causing any greater safety concern than would have been caused previously but collectively, we have discussed that as a, a problem. I think the greater problem to North Reading residents and business owners is their lack of ability to get this work done because they've locked out all their workers. So it does have a direct impact us, on us in that aspect, although we have heard from our director saying they, we don't really have much going on here. Uh, but I wouldn't want the disruption, the potential disruption that this is going to cause to affect us either, so you can wordsmith it. No, 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 I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace it, but what I'm reading is not what I'm hearing. I guess that, that that's my only 
concerned is put something together here, but. Well, I mean, I, I don't think we, I don't think we can say for certain we have people that are <coughs> involved in this active dispute saying it could be. We have public safety saying there's no greater risk than was previously. We have people that are actively involved in this dispute confirming it's basically the same crews that have been doing work previously. So, Mr. Schultz. Uh, gentlemen, you guys are meeting twice next week. How fast are your union can vote on something? How, to get everybody together, nope. what's it? I, this, 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 if we had something, it could be within two or three days. Okay, so it's pretty quick. Um, I have no problem supporting something encouraging both sides to get together. And I know you guys are willing to negotiate, but I think anything we send from here should encourage both sides to get to the table and work together and lock the door and don't leave the room until you have an agreement, like, you know, for back of a better term. I don't think we should just single out one side. I do agree, though, if national, if, with a capital I, if National Grid is using unqualified people, that's a problem. We don't know that to be a case, but if they are, that's an issue. And I know what you guys are, I, I've already heard you guys' position on that. Yep. Um, I have no problem supporting something that encourages everybody to come to the table. That's where I stand on it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Mosseri? The issue is that there's 1,300 employees, right, that are not working. And if they were working, the supervisors would be doing their job, the 700 other people they bring in, they bring in anyway. As needed. Right, as needed. Yeah. So it's a shortage of people that they don't have to deal with projects. And it seems like the only way this is going to get settled is by the union and National Grid to continue to talk and come up with a solution, go to arbitration, whatever. Okay. You know, unfortunately, it's not like we deal with, with, especially with police and fire. This is not a public employee union. Strike, yeah. uh, and we can't kick them off the job because law doesn't allow us to right. do so. Right. Okay. Just, uh, just in relation to a comment you made, Madam Chair, in relation to you know the, the burden that's being put on our administration that should be with National Grid. What's been proposed here is the additional burden is write a letter to the governor. Require National Grid when they when they ask for a permit to provide us a list of the workers, and for us to forward that list to the DPU. It's not an awful lot of additional burden, and again, and it also allows significant discretion on the administration as to which jobs to to worry about. So, you know, I take exception that the way that you're presenting what has been proposed is a significant additional burden on our on our administration. It's not. I've worded it as such so that it wouldn't be. And it allows significant discretion. Um, well, I'm not confused, but we have a difference of opinion mm -hmm. in terms of it. So let's move along. On, um, so are you, you offering know, this as a motion? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but you asked me if I had an alternative to propose, and that was my alternative. And I can't. Uh, can you gentlemen come to our next meeting? Give us an update. I certainly can. Okay. I would, we appreciate that. I know you're taking time out of your family. And you're, you know, I want to see you guys wrap this up. I really do. So, M Madam Chair. Yes. Just something that Mr. I would Barrett. like to add. So the DPW director referenced, I think, six permits that are pending that uh, were, uh, some of which I think were active at one point, uh, expired, and then reapplied for all at the end of August uh, last month. Um, again, they're broken down into abandonments of services, which probably have very little impact upon a development, uh, new services, which could impact a development or could impact a homeowner. Um, and I think there was uh, some sort of a regular regulator or, or other type work, it, it maintenance type work that was to be done on their system. Um, we are aware of residents in town who are waiting for work to be done. And I, I don't want those residents who might be watching this or reading about it to think we've, you know, we're not aware of it. Now, we have received calls from folks who have said, I'm waiting for a new gas service because I'm converting from oil to gas, for example. And National Grid has not scheduled it, not been able to schedule it because of resources. I, I don't, I want the public to know that we are aware of those. Um, Again, will they be scheduled? Again, it remains to be seen. We just don't know. But for those residents at home who may be watching this or read about it after the fact, we are aware 
that there, that there has already been an impact for them as well. Thank you for the opportunity Great. to offer that. Thank you. All right, we need to move on to the next item on the well, agenda. I, what I'd like to do, Madam Chair, is just oh. uh, read you, re resolve into, into the minutes and for action at the next meeting. So, uh, just for the for the record and for the minutes, um, uh, Madam Chair has proposed an outline for a resolve to be considered uh, to be um, considered by the board at our next meeting. Resolve that it is the sense of the members of the North Reading Select Board. Well, we're not there yet, but Selectman Board, Selectman Select Board hasn't been signed into law yet. The communication should be sent to National Grid by the clerk of the board, aye, 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 stating aye, aye, substantially aye, aye, aye. the following that the prolonged dispute between National Grid and its union employees uh, who have been prevented from work since June 25th is placing services at risk or delay or disruption to our businesses and residents. Presents concerns for our community regarding safety due to uncertainty as to the level of training and qualifications of replacement workers being utilized by National Grid at the present time and is likely in the end ultimately to impact ratepayers at, at large financially. Therefore, the North Reading Select Board determines it is necessary to communicate this resolve to National Grid to take immediate steps to return its qualified and trained employees to service while the parties resolve their collective bargaining issues. The Select Board holds National Grid accountable for any issues, hazards, and injuries caused due to any work performed or provided by less qualified or less trained replacement crews. Finally, the Select Board also deems it necessary to advise National Grid in writing of its current position and that it will continue to monitor uh, the need to take more serious preventive measures in the near future if National Grid's prolonged failure to return these qualified and trained employees to duty presents any risk to our citizens. And this is to be considered at our next board meeting. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the minutes. August 20th, 2018, regular and executive session. Uh, Madam Chair. I move to approve the August 20th, 2018, regular session minutes as written. Motion, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 20, 2018 executive session minutes. Second. Motion and a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Next order of business is the middle and high school driveway and a vote to approve the order of taking and a vote to sign the plan. Madam Chair, through you, uh, more for the edification of the members and of the public, uh, yes, we did vote on this order of taking at the June meeting. If you're wondering why it's back up in front of us again, um, we had a question relative to the accompanying plan that the board was to sign, which was not included in the motion. Um, took us some time to try to figure out how that plan uh, was to be handled uh, given that it had already been endorsed by the Planning Commission at a prior meeting and uh, ultimately uh, we were able to resolve the question about this plan but not within the 30-day window in which we were required to record the order of taking so the board's being asked to re-vote the order of taking as well as to vote to sign the Mylar plan which we have here this evening can be signed at the end of the meeting um, it's an administrative action at this point uh, we've settled with the, the private property owner relative to um, the, the land in question on Park Street. Um, there are no damages. Part of the exchange was the paving of an apron off of the driveway, which took place when the road was final paved uh, more than two years ago. Um, and uh, we asked the board to uh, vote and sign the documents. Okay. So it's ministerial. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. It is with great pleasure. <laughs> After all this... <laughs> Uh, again. 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 I move to approve the order of taking for the parcel of land shown as parcel 
a area equals 127 square plus or minus square feet on a plan entitled acceptance plan and street layout plan middle high school driveway north reading massachusetts with a revision date of december 24 2015 prepared by welch associate land surveyors incorporated to sign the order of taking to award damages in the amount of zero dollars and to sign said plan i have a motion do i have a second second all those in favor aye, aye. opposed none excuse me madam chair through you just a, a um, a note relative to that matter there will be an action at town meeting to convey uh, that property to be taken uh, by the town again through a so-called friendly taken uh, taking to assign its custody to the Department of Public Works as part of the middle and high school driveway that's on the warrant for the October town meeting and we'll explain that on the floor of town meeting when it comes up thank Ms. you Masiri? just a question for the town administrator uh, the approval and signing of the Verizon Cable Franchise License Agreement? Yes. It's been taken off? Correct. Uh, can you just give me a brief summary sure. of why? Sure. So as the board knows, they were asked to re-sign the Comcast uh, Cable License Agreement at the August 20th meeting, which the board did. Um, we then forwarded it to Comcast for execution. We are awaiting its return from Comcast to then provide it to the Cable Advisory Committee who are going to need to provide it to Verizon in order to conclude their okay, negotiations. So, that so that's kind of where things stand. Uh, no necessarily uh, hold up, uh, but it's more working its way through the approval process. I, I was wondering if there was some other issue happening. Sure. It, we, we, it was left on the agenda through you, Madam Chair. Be, uh, because uh, we just weren't sure whether it was going to be returned in a timely fashion or not. Um, so out of an abundance of caution, we left it on the agenda. We, today, it, it wasn't here. We felt it was fair to take it off the agenda. Okay. All right. Our next order of business is an annual municipal review of town-owned mm -hmm. land. Uh, Madam Chair, through you, uh, this is something that the, the board does, I believe, by both by policy and by bylaw to review the status of all municipally owned land. Uh, so we forwarded the list of land to um, a series of departments uh, by virtue of a memorandum that we reviewed at an earlier meeting. And what we've done is basically provided a spreadsheet that shows the, those that responded with some level of interest. Uh, we tried to uh, sort it by the number of um, responses that showed favorable interest in a particular parcel. So that's all included in multiple pages of a spreadsheet that, in all honesty, I, don't, I was not expecting that we were going to review in detail at the meeting this evening. Um, it's followed by letters of interest from a number of individuals, uh, who, and I'll just go quickly through those. One is relative to property adjacent to um, uh, uh, Bear Road in North Reading. Uh, one letter relative to interest concerning um, property uh, on Riverside Drive. A letter of interest relative to property abutting 92 Burroughs Road. Uh, those are the ones that are pending at this point in time. We've received informal inquiries on uh, other properties and encouraged them to reduce those inquiries to writing, um, some of which have uh, not come in yet. Um, but uh, this is something that's required again under the bylaws and town policy. We've completed the action before the board. The board may wish to schedule uh, further discussion at some point in time or may wish to file it for action. Uh, for, for for no further action. Any comments? Just Mr. so I can in relation to any request for um, <clears throat> property that I know it goes through the normal review process, but mm -hmm. we have a um, maybe some new consideration in relation to possible wastewater uh, treatment and need for pumping stations and things like that. So mm -hmm. particularly over the Martins Pond area, so for something like the Bear Road, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we should run it through um, again, just to take a critical look at uh, the request for those types of properties. And we may even want to take a look at what properties we already own, and we may want to again, s separate those out Reserve. for future uh, uh, wastewater sure. expansion. Okay. okay. Any other members have any comments? No? So we will... Um, put this on for further action. The board could perhaps discuss in detail the right. three requests we receive at a future meeting. I think um, that's a, that'd be 
appropriate. Mr. Mosseri. The spreadsheet. Yes. Can you make that available? Yes. We can make it a, an available in an Excel spreadsheet. I believe there's a folder in Sharefile for town-owned land, which we'll add it to. And if there isn't, we'll create one. So can that be done soon, so the, the day before the meeting, I'm running through it? Um, we could probably do it Monday, right, mm -hmm. Ms. Brooks? So I think Monday we can upload it. Okay. You have custody so, of the thank thing, you. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in check. Okay. Maybe po Monday, possibly sooner. It's in Monday sooner. So we'll take that up at uh, further. Uh, take that up further at one of sure. our next meetings. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the review and discussion of the October town meeting warrant article. Through you, Madam Chair, uh, we have provided a copy of a draft of the warrant, which after tonight's meeting we'll send to town council for review and comment in advance of the board signing the warrant potentially or actually needs to sign it on Monday September 17th in order to make sure that it gets to homes in accordance with the town's uh, charter and bylaw requirements um, for those who might be um, listening or watching at home uh, I believe we're at 23 articles at this point in time uh, we have all of the language on for those articles uh, I believe we reviewed the list at the last meeting um, I can't recall if we had any additional articles added but I know we changed the order of the articles by virtue of the request that came in I think it was related to the um, snow removal article with the bylaw amendment um, being article 21 proposed by the board the citizens petition to repeal the bylaw relative to snow removal on streets and sidewalks being article 22 and the name change for Brian's way um, from Bompel Drive to Brian's way being article 23 um, w I will note that the there are a number of articles for which we're waiting for cost estimates one of them is relative to the wastewater collection system uh, planning and design uh, I believe mr. chairman you've asked the chair uh, to uh, mr. chairman excuse me, I, be, I believe mr. Missouri you have asked the chairman to place on the agenda for September 17th a discussion of the wastewater so that we can better frame what the intent is of the board after that discussion my impression and, and, and my, my, my what I believe would take place is we would then get a proposal from the consultant to um, reflect the board's desire and only then would we know the actual cost estimate um, for uh, for that project relative to the article 12 on the water system improvements we're not expecting to request any funding at this point we believe that we have sufficient funding in place um, from the June town meeting there may be an appropriation requested under article um, 12 uh, excuse me 13 for uh, the uh, acquisition of water system uh, property which mr. chair mr. chair uh, through you madam chair um, mr. O'Leary identified in his comments earlier in the meeting but that is where the draft of the warrant stands uh, right now um, again one thing I'll just kind of provide an update on the uh, funding for survey engineering design and or construction for a portion of Swan Pond Road uh, so that was submitted by the Department of Public Works as a follow-up to the June town meeting um, we do have a uh, form for right of entry for the properties that will be circulated among residents uh, from what I understand tomorrow um, and I've asked the engineer to stress the timelines and the importance of a timely response by the residents and how that will impact our ability to take further action whatever it might be at the October town meeting um, I, I will say in, in all candor uh, and, and certainly with no intention um, there is a there is work to be done to obtain the sign offs and then conduct the exercise um, it's taken us longer than I would have liked to get this form to the point that it needed to be at it's not intentional um, I know there's frustration on the parts of the residents um, I know there's frustration on the parts of some of the approving bodies as well because we may end up in a situation where we have um, information of value leading right up to that October town meeting um, so uh, you know it, it's unfortunate but uh, you know given the number of legal complexities with this and the timeline required to get the form developed it did take us longer than we would have wanted but we do have it in place and we are distributing it beginning tomorrow um, 
I want to thank the town engineer who uh, not here this evening, but is kind of spearheading that. And I know he's going to be in communication with Miss um, Carvada relative to the best way to directly access people. So the intention is to distribute a paper flyer and mail it to the uh, owner of record as well, so we can get them back as quickly as possible um, and get in there. And again, we are, we are committed to you know looking at the, if there's a a first phase of um, abutting properties that we can get at uh, to try to advance this along I think that's something we would consider so that we can make some progress in a timely fashion um, we know that there may be one or two properties that are not interested um, I think at this point our knowledge the those are at the end so they're not contiguous to the whole project so that would effectively shrink the area that we're talking about but uh, we will eagerly await the response back for that approval to, to enter the properties to do the work that we need to do and I provided a similar update to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting at their meeting last evening as well. And they are um, aware of this project and uh, watching it with interest. Um. So I think those are all the significant things that have come up since the la last review of the list of articles. Obviously, this is the first the board is seeing of the draft warrant itself. The, the next step, as I mentioned, will be to send it to town council ask them to review it, provide any comments, and we'll have a so-called clean copy for you to sign in the presence of a constable on September 17th. If any members have any comment, questions? Mr. Mosseri? I'll just make a, a comment regarding the sewer. We did get from our engineering uh, <coughs> consultants the cost of the sewer in an estimate form, and I now have it broken down in pieces, which includes work that has to, we have to pay for in handover. I'm now trying to get a count of the betters that would be paying for all or part of the cost of the sewer system. So we can determine what the better cost is going to be. That's great. And this is going to be a, a big sell to the community, and uh, we're going to have to, uh, the plan would be to have some form of report for town meeting. Focus more on why we need to do this. It's exciting news. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the board is in a strategic plan wants to raise a commercial tax base, you know, which is now at about 12%. I don't know what the goal is. We probably should think about that a little bit and then determine the, uh, the investment and how it's going to get paid. So there's a lot of work to be done between now and town meeting, but a good part of the information is available. And we have another meeting coming up before our next meeting. Yeah. But we, have a meeting have, we have a meeting next Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're meeting the 12th. And as Steve said, he's arranged a meeting related to some property that we will need to build one of the uh, uh, chlorine addition okay. plants uh, as part of the end of the water program. Are you guys honorary citizens up there? Yes. Well, no, th this is local. No. This is still taking a long <laughs> We're not back up there yet. So in terms of that, just in terms of what we had talked about throughout those that negotiation process and the expectation for people that are watching or listening it would be um, the Main Street corridor and Martin's Pond area well it starts at the Andover border on 28 goes down all the way down 28 bends on Park Street and goes down Concord Street there is some plan to put s some line up toward the center of town that we have to make a decision on and then we do know we will be required to provide sewer to the Lions Pond area. The DEP will require that. And the question is, how do we go about getting it done? In terms of the betters, how much are they going to pay versus for the entire community? Because there is a benefit for the entire community to have sewer. But we're not, the plan is definitely not to sewer the entire mm -hmm. town main focus for doing this is to provide sewage in the commercial <coughs> districts where there is an opportunity based on studies uh, to grow our commercial base. And if we can get our commercial base to 20, 25%, which would be a 
25 is probably a long stretch, would be a significant be uh, benefit to the taxpayers of the community because right now they're bearing the, the burden. And uh, if we have a larger commercial base like a lot of the other towns around us, and we will have a better control on the expanding tax rate on an annual basis. It obviously the uh, the program will call for a phasing of the system, <laughs> you know, as far as you know the, the build out of the system. But we're going to yeah. have to develop the entire plan again. What the consultants are looking mm -hmm. for from the board is uh, guidance as to how far do you want them to go, and uh, so we're. Uh, and, and one of the more uh, more important things too is that Ando committed to help us with the sewer, which has to go through their town. And uh, we need to keep that communication going before they forget about it. We don't want that to happen. Any other comments? Do I want to ask the members what you want to do with snow and ice, or do we want to not? I can give an update on that. That would be great. Uh, we met uh, uh, myself, uh, Chief Murphy, Pat Bowers was there from the business community, Jerry Venezia and Eric Evans were there. I hope I didn't leave anyone out. Uh, we're trying to come up with a solution, kind of a middle ground on this. We've kicked a few ideas around. We are going to meet again prior to town meeting, and the goal is to have a unified, um, not have two dueling motions on the town meeting floor, but to have something concrete to go forward. And I know we're meeting again in a few weeks, so we'll, we'll meet. We're going to meet again with them before our last board meeting before town meeting, if that makes sense. So we'll have a, we'll have a board meeting to discuss what they come up with. So that's the, we're kind of kicking a lot of ideas around now and, you know, trying to find a solution. It's a clunky situation. It's been, how many years have you guys dealt with this issue? Like every year for the last? Yeah, forever. Forever. Yeah. We're trying to figure it out. It says we put the bylaw in place. Yeah. So everyone's working together, which is good. Members have any other comments on the warrant articles right Don't now? Don't hurry for the snow. That's my only comment. We're not in a hurry. <laughs> Put a dome over the town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Might be cheaper. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Gilberto, anything else on that agenda item? No. All right. So moving along, we are at number 12 appointments, Martin's Pond Committee. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following name for appointment as a member of the Martins, Martins Pond Reclamation Study Committee for a term to expire December 31st, 2020. Joel A. Spruance for Traveled Way. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Arthur Kenny Field Restroom Concession Stand. Vote to approve the payment. Vote to approve the change order if necessary. Mr. Ma Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, I'm going to allow Mr. O'Leary to deliver the, the good Mr. news. Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> this is it, huh? I'm gonna, I shouldn't say, did I say allow? I'm going to ask Mr. O'Leary to is deliver there good, the good there news. There is good news, yes. Uh, the, the project is complete, and, uh, and it looks good, and uh, we're satisfied. So we should pay the bill. Is that right? That's accurate. That's accurate. Do yeah. I hear a motion? Oh, yeah. Madam Chair, I move to approve the payment requisition number nine in the amount of $38,489.66 to Construction Dynamics, Inc. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Masseri. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. And just as a comment, uh, again, to the, uh, the committee that was working on this from the very beginning when we couldn't seem to get this thing off the ground or moving and uh, the prices kept escalating and the uh, number of uh, fixtures in the facility kept fluctuating. Uh, you know, congratulations for, the, for them for, well, for sticking no, with it. And, it looks great. And again, uh, fortunately, as the bids came in within the appropriation, we're able to put that facade on there, which uh, matches very nicely. And uh, it's getting a lot of use already. It's working well. So. I did have the opportunity to go inside. Heather Laverdia was man in the shack for, for a soccer tournament, and it's amazing. Do we have any leftovers from this, or is it all spent? Oh, no, it is, spent. It, it is all more than spent. And again, um, I'll, provide, of, yeah. <laughs> I'll provide just a brief update on the budget. So, um, you know, we, we had a, 
an agreement, uh, commitment by the Friends of North Reading Parks and Recreation to uh, cover uh, any overage in the interest of being able to pave that drive access, driveway access for utility purposes so that it wouldn't damage the uh, pedestrian walkway. Uh, we're still working to identify exactly what that dollar amount is in terms of the overage. Uh, the project did end up costing more than the appropriation, but we had a commitment to cover the balance up to a particular dollar amount by this uh, by the, the Friends of North Reading Parks and Recreation. We're just working to reconcile that now. Uh, so I, I don't want to lose sight of their commitment and their support as well, which got that done um, along with, um, obviously, the work of the committee. It's great. Thank you for everybody for making that one happen. That was a long, a long, term, long time coming. Expensive process too, but it's done. It's completed, and it's going to meet our needs for the foreseeable future. So it's, it's a I great. I was going to. And it completes. It, it caps off that so facility great. too. So really I was going to wait till our final comments, but at some point, maybe through the capital uh, planning, we should consider buying the, you know, commercial grade stove and refrigerator and freezer equipment for it. So That's for that, that would be a great, it, it would be expensive or, or at least an upgrade to what's there. I think what was there is donated, which is excellent and is in, is in good use, but it's a little bit old and there's no shelves in the refrigerator, so <laughs> it's a little clunky to use, but Be just married. keep keep it in mind. You know, we have this amazing, beautiful new building and and it's going to serve the community for years and years and years to come. It's going to get good use. We should maybe consider putting some, you know, quality equipment in there for the people that are using it too. So that's just my two cents. All right. Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I'd ask uh, the indulgence of the board because I do have um, a number of things to offer comment on this evening. Um, you have three minutes. Make it fast. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm <laughs> please. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and most of it, I mean, I think all of it is of value to uh, folks in town. Uh, I'm going to start with the utility advisory that the Department of Public Works is going to be putting out. And it relates back to the comments that I believe Mr. Vasari and other members made earlier. Uh, I'm going to read it just in the interest of getting it out there because I think it best captures everything. Uh, but th this is an advisory, a utility advisory from the North Reading Department of Public Works. Regarding the trash and recycling fee, uh, as we all know, the quarterly trash recycling fee um, is charged to residences that participate in the town's solid waste and recycling program. It increased effective July 1, 2018 to an annual fee of $272 per unit. The fee is $68 per quarter, and most homes should have received it, the bill in a mail th in a, the bill in the mail uh, this week, for as it was sent out at the end of August. The increase to the $68 reflects the first change in 10 years, as was indicated earlier. The current contract governing solid waste recycling um, collection is in effect through June 30th, 2019, and further modifications to the trash recycling program may occur when the contract expires. I think we've talked at length about that. Uh, regarding water bills and the water meter replacement program, North Reading Water Department is currently in the process of upgrading the town's meter, pro meter system, as we know, which includes a replacement of all the existing residential and commercial water meters connected to the municipal water system. The new metering technology allows the, the Water Department to provide more accurate and timely billing to improve customer service through an enhanced ability to detect and stop leaks and to better answer questions about water use. The new system will also provide customers the ability to track their water use directly and receive alerts for unusually high water consumption and I'm going to be posting this uh, as an advisor on the town website too if folks are interested in reading it um, most customers will receive the standard water and trash uh, and water and trash and recycling bill combined in the mail in areas of town where meters are being replaced the water bills are slightly delayed due to the transfer of data associated with the meter replacements if the water section of your water or water and trash bill is blank and does not show any water usage information, you'll be receiving a separate water bill for this quarter within a few days. The water rates for fiscal year 2019 were unchanged from the rates in fiscal year 2018, and that was pursuant to a hearing held by the board in June of this year. The new water meters are read and built to the nearest gallon, as opposed to the older meter system that rounded down to the nearest 1,000 gallons. Please note that in the event 
that the start and stop date for your current bill exceeded the typical billing quarter, which is approximately 91 days, the water volume allowed in each tier was adjusted to account for the longer reading cycle. The town anticipates that the period of time between bills will be uniform once the new meter system is fully functional. And that was a big selling point for us that we'd be able to predict when the bills would be issued so that we wouldn't have a lag in time with people getting a 100 days billed, uh, particularly in the high use season of the summertime. So we're eager to get that implemented. Um, residents are reminded that the current water bills are for summer bill the summer building quarter, in most cases beginning in May and ending in August. Water usage for a summer quarter can be significantly higher than for winter quarters due to the outdoor water use, resulting in water bills that can be much higher than the last water bill you received. Again, in the event that the start and stop date for your current bill exceeded the typical billing quarter of 91 days, the water volume allowed in each tier has been adjusted to account for the longer reading cycle. Probably the most important thing. If you have a question about your particular water or trash bill, we encourage you to contact the water department uh, either via email, which is water at northreadingma.gov, or by telephone at 978-664-6009. Uh, particularly in the case of a new uh, uh, a home with a new meter, we can evaluate fairly quickly what your water usage has been to determine if there's any issue of your concern. So we strongly encourage anybody with any question to reach out to the water department. That's the first of nine items. <laughs> Three more Ms. Ms. Just, yes. uh, I know I talked to you on the phone about this. Yes. But uh, the past two water bills, uh, not just this one, mm -hmm. one before, and we've been on the new meter. Our bill said zero. And then, because we pay the bill through the town website, when we go to pay the bill, most cases, it's a day or two later. The amount was in there. And then a second bill came in the mail later. And I only question it because it's been two billing periods. So, so, so you had called this to my attention, and I did have a conversation with both the finance director and the water superintendent, and we, we did not have an immediate explanation why it happened twice in your particular instance. But if you have the information that you received in the mail and could give it to us, either to Mark or to myself, we want to kind of dig at Muniz and see why that's happening. Because um, I'm sure you're not the only person that it's happened to, uh, but you're the first that we've heard to hear it <coughs> happen twice. Right, We're the second time there was a notice. Yes, right, right. right. Um, so if you I'm could- I'm just curious as to maybe there's some software issue that needs to be fixed. Uh, it sounds like there is. Um, it, it would be helpful to have the, just the documents that you received just I'll to validate. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. The uh, second thing I want to note, again, related to the water uh, replacement program, is that the installer has uh, scheduled door-to-door uh, -door home visits for this upcoming Saturday, September 8th. And they're concentrating their home visits in the area of town, which is east of Central Street. And the purpose is east of Central Street. The purpose is uh, to identify areas where we've mailed postcards, perhaps directly interact with the residents who haven't been able to schedule their, uh, their um, water meter change out um, at a time that might be more convenient for them. Uh, I think everyone Come can attest. my house then. East, not west. <laughs> oh, oh they, they did give us a postcard on Oh, that. okay. Um, so the, um, it's a, again, for most people, it's a very quick interaction. They must so have finished with west. <laughs> if you're... <laughs> If you're home and you're able to afford a few minutes, it generally takes very little time. So it was a total uh, 21 minutes in my house, in the house. Um, I, again, start to finish. The, the bigger hassle is obviously clearing out the access if it's blocked. Um, that was about 21 days. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just encourage people to be uh, be aware that they're coming. To, we've alerted the, the police department that the that the, that this door-to-door -door canvassing will be happening. And believe me, we're well aware that uh, an unannounced visit at somebody's home is uh, not what it used to be from a standpoint of interacting <coughs> with the public, but we are at a point with many of these residents where we don't know what else to do in order to gain access. What so will they have by way of an ID that can be visible to people when they look out the door? So my understanding is that they're carrying identification relative to uh, what their role is and they will identify themselves for the, pur for the purpose that they are there. Uh, it's not a town of North Reading employee that you'd be interacting with, although there may be somebody in the field supervising to some extent. Uh, it will be a contractor from USI, who is the contracted meter installation company. Uh, 
Mr. Schultz. Yeah, Mr. Kilbert, I think you might have mentioned it, but I, I did get some inquiries on it. When yeah. was the last time we raised the trash fee? Uh, about 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I, th I think it's exactly 10 years ago, actually. <coughs> Thank you. A um, couple of things, maybe not quite as lengthy. Um, job books for the Senior Citizen Tax Rebate Program will be available beginning this coming Wednesday, September 12th. The books are located in the Town Clerk's Office in Town Hall, the O'Leary Senior Center, and in uh, the Flint Memorial Library. There will be a meeting to inform potential participants of changes in the program. The meeting will be here at Town Hall on Wednesday, September 12th at 10 o'clock a.m. I included a copy of the notice, which we also put up on the town website. And uh, again, just to reiterate, the changes are um, good and bad. Um, the good news is we are increasing the dollar amount to $750. Um, uh, we are also increasing the hours from 94 hours to 100 hours, um, but that still washes out to an increase in the hourly rate. People are permitted to work less than the maximum uh, of 100 hours if they're not able to work that 100 hours, so we ask them to consider that. Um, we are required to consider the uh, income. Um, we are required to tax the income for federal tax purposes. Uh, that's something that we've been advised of recently, so that will be new. It's something that would have occurred regardless of whether we increased the dollar amount provided, uh, but it was brought to our attention. Um, fortunately, Massachusetts state tax law does not make that income taxable, but federal law does require that it be taxed. Uh, we're going to go through that at this meeting. We won't be able to answer particular questions relative to somebody's particular tax situation, but we are going to explain what the changes are. Just in, re in relation to that, are we going to be issuing a 1099 or a W-2? W-2. W-2? Yes. And there's, uh, there's an advisory from the DOR on this. It's pretty clearly spelled out what we're required to do. And it's not what we've done in the past, candidly, but that's the so guidance. So are these seniors going to have to contribute to some sort of a... OBRA, Medicare. And then they'll be eligible for a refund at, after the year has elapsed if they have not participated or so. Why could we not give them a 1099 and put it in box three, which is a lot simpler? Uh, we, I, we'd love to, I think. <laughs> but the advisory from the Department of Revenue is that, that it's treated as taxable, that they are employees, it's treated as taxable income for federal tax purposes. But, but issuing a 1099... I'll have to take a look at the advisory again. Sure, and it may be worth having a conversation with the, the treasurer as well. I, she can speak more to it than I can. So, That's bizarre. You know, for $750, again, they're not employees, uh, per se, and it's... Uh, well, if they weren't getting the increase based on the decision, and it was well, still under Well, it's under 600, it's under 600, no, it's under $600, and there's nothing needs to be issued. Uh, it's, it's the $600 threshold which triggers things, generally. And... Uh, I think it's bizarre that they need to go into a W-2 pay Medicare because taxes. Because they, they end up paying Social Security. Well, that's what we, we're not, not Social Security. Security so, no. it's, so are they going to be forced to participate in some sort of a deferred comp? OBRA. An OBRA contribution, yeah. Mandatory. Uh, un unless there's some exemptions that I'm not aware of that might be a case-by-case, case, but the general, the general advisory that we've been given and intend to provide to the participants is that yes they would need to participate do we do that with our uh, summer help uh I, I couldn't speak to that out first and i don't know i, I mean it's and small potatoes I mean, it's small change and it's and they're not and, and i don't know whether the summer help is going to be qualifies. getting any significant amount of qualifying amount where they would be We're required to participate but anyway i think we need to push back a little bit more I, I, pushing back with the department of revenue yes I think. Yeah. but anyway okay so again, we just want to make, make people aware of it more than anything else um, at this point. Um, you know, we've tried to advise folks to the extent possible, but I'm you know, offering it here again. We're going to have a meeting to try to apprise folks of what we've been advised. Um, the uh, town's information technology department's in the process of updating the telephone system serving town departments in the town hall, the senior center, and the Flint Memorial Library. Our legacy phone system, which is a Nortel PBX model um, that was uh, fully uh, metered billing using 15 plus year old technology that has been without manufacturer support for a few years now, will be replaced with a voice over IP system with uh, flat rate billing effective tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock a.m. The project will replace aging, unreliable equipment and create a more flexible and more cost efficient phone system that's projected to save the town approximately $6,000 per year. 
While we do not anticipate any telephone outage during business hours, the public's understanding of any potential inconvenience is appreciated. Departmental phone numbers will not be changing at this time, although some consolidation may occur in the future. Non-emergency phone systems in the public safety complex will be addressed at a future point in time and the improvements will, will not impact 911. Truck, mount, truck mounted mosquito spraying was conducted on Tuesday, September 4th for the neighbors of North Reading that are located in the vicinity of Turner Drive, Patriot Way, Abbott Road, Green Street, and streets off of Chestnut Street. I'll just remind folks, uh, we have uh, information up on the website relative how to protect yourself uh, using bug spray, avoiding exposure um, between um, dusk and dawn are, are the best practices. There are no restrictions that are in place, but they are recommendations. There were uh, more cases identified for West Nile virus uh, in Wilmington and Tewksbury nearby today. So we just ask folks to um, you know, exercise uh, you know, best practices to protect themselves from potential exposure to mosquito-borne illness. The Community Planning Commission, uh, working with the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission uh, as its consultant, has created a new master plan, is creating a new master plan for the town, excuse me. Uh, information regarding the project may be found on the CPC's webpage. Residents are encouraged to participate in an online survey and upcoming public, public forums scheduled for September 26th and October 30th, both at 6.30 p.m. The town's home rule petition to establish more flexibility in scheduling the date of the June and October town meetings was signed into law on August 30th. Copy of the law was attached to my report, and I thank Representative Jones and Senator Tarr for their efforts. I'm told that the petition to rename the Board of Selectmen Select Board is under review with Senate Council. It passed the House of Representatives on July 23rd. Uh, we were requested to provide information today to the state archivist, which we did. So hopefully that will move things along in Senate Council and we'll get that legislation signed into law as well. <coughs> uh, funding for year three of the town's federal youth substance abuse grant was approved by the federal government uh, last week. So we're pleased to see that. We are in a five-year grant program with them. And finally, the DPW is preparing to begin two substantial paving projects on Haverhill Street from North Street to the Andover Line and on Park Street from Main Street to the Wilmington Town Line. And I uh, have a notice that was going out to residents and is up <coughs> on the town website as well. I just ask folks to be aware uh, of that uh, work which is upcoming um, to be done uh, in, in two steps. Uh, so uh, we appreciate the public's patience. And that concludes my report. Thank you for your indulgence. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Have all the new business, Mr. O'Leary. All set. And as you mentioned earlier, just be careful. The kids are out there. They're on the streets. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yes, the school buses are out. <laughs> you, you always say that every year. I've noted. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, I have nothing else. Okay. Mr. Schultz? Uh, yeah, I'll be real brief. There's, i got to make sure I have the facts here. Uh, we have two children here in elementary school in North Reading who suffer from Usher syndrome. Uh, Usher syndrome is a leading cause, genetic cause of hearing loss and vision loss, deaf blindness. Children are typically born with hearing loss and slowly lose their vision. The vision loss is a slow progression. Uh, there's going to be a benefit for this foundation, which I think is a very worthy cause. And we have two little girls in our town that are affected by this that will lose their vision uh, probably as they reach their late teens into early adulthood. Um, that's going to be um, September 20th at Giggles on Route 1 in Saugus. And I encourage people to go out. It's a great cause. And it affects, again, two kids in our town that. You know, it's a disease people don't know a lot about, but it really, we need to find a cure. That's all. Okay. And I'm all set. I think we've talked about everything that we needed to talk about. So do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Meeting so is adjourned.